All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the uh, February 15th, 16th meeting of the uh, Board of Directors of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission. And uh, welcome to all. And a reminder that we are now recording this meeting, and it is being live streamed on YouTube for the public. Today's board meeting is a hybrid meeting with some members uh, and partici participants located physically at the Commission's offices here at 106th Street and Jasper Avenue in the City of Edmonton, and others are participating from their respective homes and places of work for the duration of the recording. Welcome to all guests and viewers. Thank you to those who have joined us here today and to the members of the public watching our live stream or later recording this meeting. As we start every meeting, and because it's important that we do so, we start our meetings with a land acknowledgement. So it is my pleasure on behalf of the board that we would like to acknowledge the traditional land on which we are gathered is Treaty 6 land. We would like to thank the diverse indigenous peoples whose ancestors' footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as the Cree, the Dene, the Soto, the Nakota Sioux, and Blackfoot peoples. We also acknowledge this as the Métis homeland and the home of the largest concentration of Inuit south of the 60th parallel. It is a welcoming place for all peoples who come from around the world to share the Edmonton metropolitan region as a home. I'd also like to uh, welcome to our meeting this afternoon Mayor Jeff Hacker from the city of uh, Spruce Grove. Welcome, sir. And, uh, we, uh, we know that your traveling companion is in Mazatlan, and we certainly are happy to have you here this afternoon. So, uh, board members, we have uh, Councillor Gromberg and, and Councillor Knack online. Uh, welcome you too. And uh, we'll uh, call the meeting to order, of course. And the first item is uh, an approval of the agenda. So could I get someone to move that? Thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Councillor Finstad. I move the February 16th, 2023 agenda be adopted as presented. Thank you very much. And uh, in, in, uh, in chambers here, we'll, uh, we'll have a show of hands uh, online if you can just use the raise hand function. And that is passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, on to the consent agenda. Uh, we have uh, the agenda, the consent agenda before us, and it speaks to some of the uh, uh, attachments to the board package. So could I ask someone to uh, move this particular motion? Thank you, Councillor Harris. Um. Mr. Chair, I would move that the consent agenda be approved as presented, including the approval of the deferral of the issuance of requisition number two as approved in the 2023 operating budget to reflect the current actions to wind down the activities of the commission. Thank you very much. Uh, and we, we pulled that uh, uh, requisition two out because it's, it is included in the report, but we do want it to be noted in the, uh, in the official uh, public motion. Thank you. Any questions related to the consent agenda motion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please raise your hand. And that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. All right, so on to the meat of, of today. Uh, first part is the uh, approval of the 2022 audit. I'll turn this over to you, Mr. Jankowski, to introduce our guests. Thank you. I'll be brief and I'll, I'll actually turn it over to Ms. Lori Shea Smith. Um, Lori has been working with our external auditors over the course of the last uh, number of months and we're happy today. Normally what we would present uh, are the findings to our finance and audit committee, uh, but given the stage that we are at and given the desire to accelerate the wind down activities, we have asked Metrics to bring back the information uh, to this meeting today and uh, I'll turn it over to Lori to speak to the actions further. Thank you, Paul. 
As you're aware, Metrics Group um, has been the Commission's auditor uh, since the first year. So this is the second year of their engagement. And um, when we came back after the new year um, and you gave direction to start winding down the Commission, we did ask Metrics Group to change the audit plan and to advance uh, the testing. So I would really like to thank um, Jeff Alliston, who is partner at Metrics Group, and Danny Ahn, who is senior manager with Metrics Group, and their team for, um, you know, jumping to our request to uh, change the timing of the testing and certainly worked hard in January and then in February to get us to where we are now, where the audit is um, substantially complete and Jeff and Danny are here to present the audit. And um, we have set aside time during the in-camera portion. As we did last year, last year it was virtual, now it's in person, so thanks for coming in person. So during the in-camera portion, you can get an opportunity to speak to the auditors without us present. Um, they may have some comments to you, you may have some questions for them, and then if anything arises from that discussion, we can bring it back to the public session after uh, we finish the in-camera session. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Jeff and Danny to um, present the um, 2022 audit. Awesome. Uh, thank you for the introductions there, Lori. Um, I guess you got my presentation here. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, so as Lori said, my name is Jeff Allison. I'm a partner with, uh, with Metrics Group, and with me is Danny Ahn, uh, Senior Manager uh, on the file. Uh, so usually with these presentations, I like to start off with a bit of a, an overview as to why we have an audit and really the importance of having one. And really it's to enhance degree of confidence of the intended users. So the main users being yourselves as the board members, uh, the province of Alberta in relation to municipal affairs, member municipalities. So those individuals or organizations have a vested interest in the financial performance of Edmonton Metro. Uh, this is achieved by the auditor expressing an opinion. So we give assurance that the numbers are free from material misstatement. Uh, so what that is, is auditors we seek reasonable assurance. So it's a high level assurance, but it's not absolute. So we do not audit every uh, transaction that happens during the year. Also as auditors, we exercise professional judgment and as well as maintain professional skepticism. So a questioning mind, uh, we stay alert to conditions which may indicate possible misstatements, so such as cutoff. We want to make sure that uh, transactions have been recorded in the correct period in which the work was performed. Uh, looking at your tangible capital assets to make sure that the uh, amortization and that the addition have been recorded correctly, as well as your financial statement disclosures. So obviously being a unique year, uh, we have some additional disclosure in regards to uh, dissolution as well as uh, going concern. And as well as an auditor uh, uh, maintaining our sorry, cr critical assessment of the audit evidence. So is the audit evidence we're looking at actual or has it been uh, manipulated? Uh, so on the next slide here, uh, I'll go over our independent auditors report. So on page uh, three and four of the financial statements, uh, we indicate at the top of that, we give our opinion, which is that the financial statements present fairly in all material respects, the financial position, results of operations in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. So those are the accounting standards that the, uh, that the commission reports under. It's also the same accounting standards that your local government reports under. So the financial statement presentation there is the same. Uh, basis for opinion is in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. So auditing standards are the same across Canada. So whether you're a publicly traded company, uh, local government or not-for-profit, auditing standards are the same. It's the uh, reporting frameworks that will change. So with the municipality reporting under Canadian public sector county standards, there's also not-for-profits, uh, IFRS, which is used for publicly traded companies, and as well as the county standards for private enterprises. Uh, responsibility of management and those charged with governance for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements. And then the last part of our audit report outlines our responsibilities, uh, which in summary indicates our objective, which is to obtain reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement. Uh, we, our procedures depend on our judgment. We also consider relevant internal controls while performing our audit, as well as evaluate your accounting policies and estimates, with your main estimate being the useful life of your tangible capital assets. Uh, so with that said, after the auditor's report is your statement of financial position. So I have a snapshot of that up here on the slide for you. So I'll just go over some changes year over year, give a few highlights there. So when it comes to your financial assets, uh, goods and services tax recoverable. So that was up to 141000 from 94. So that amount did include the 2022 and 2021 uh, GST amounts in relation to, uh, to purchases during the year. Uh, when it comes to your liabilities, bank indebtedness. So you do have a... Uh, 
outstanding credit facility here. So interest rate is at prime minus 0.75 on that. So up to about 5.2 million as at December 31, 2022. Uh, this, this is also secured by a GSA with the city of Edmonton and the city of St. Albert. Uh, accounts payable and accrued liabilities were down slightly to 134,000 from 189. In the prior year, you had accrued costs for uh, your CEO relocation to Edmonton, as well as some uh, some hardware or computer costs of about 42,000. So that's why you see a decrease there. Left the commission with total liabilities of 5.3 million and a net debt position of 5.183. Uh, so after looking at your net debt, uh, we get to your non-financial assets. So here, new for the year was your tangible capital assets, so up to 117,000. So during the year, we had added in computer equipment of 40,000, as well as 76,000 in furniture and equipment. Uh, prepaid expense and deposits were down slightly to 14,000 from 29. Last year, you had rent uh, for this space here, first month and last month. This year, you just have the last month, and as well as a small amount of ins insurance for 2023. So that left you with total non-financial assets of 130,000 and accumulated deficit of 5 million up from prior year's deficit of 2.47. Uh, so on the next slide here, after looking at your statement of financial position, these are your operations. So in the year there was no, no revenue uh, recognized or recorded here by the, by the commission. So it was just expenses, uh, which is the same as prior year. So you saw a shift from professional and consulting fees into salaries, wages, and benefits went from five employees to 12, so that caused an increase in your wages to 1.6 from 500. Professional and consulting fees decreased, as in prior years, uh, you were still incurring startup costs and consulting work being done there. Materials and supplies were up to 145 from 44. Uh, the main change year over year there was your rent, uh, which was 100,000. And then interest on bank indebtedness up to 133 from 15,000, mainly due to the increase in the balance owing, but also in the, in the rate changes over the last uh, Q4 of the year, which caused a, a spike in that. Amortization of tangible capital assets is a new expense as well, about 16,000, so that represents the useful life of the assets you had. So you had furniture and equipment purchase and computers, so that's a recognition of the usage of those during the year. And then as well, travel and meals, memberships and training, totaling 2.58 million, up slightly from prior years 2.47. And then you can see at the bottom there, uh, you add in last year's uh, accumulated deficit and onto this year's annual deficit, leaving you with an accumulated deficit of the year of 5 million. Uh, the next slide, just a little snapshot here of your debt limits. So in your notes as well, you'll see this debt limit. So Municipal Affairs has prescribed a debt service limit of $7 million. Uh, so the commission is still within that as at December 31 uh, with a total of $5.19 million. And then on the last slide here, just in summary, um, uh, annual deficit for the year of 2.5, so up from prior years 2.4, net deficit to 5.2 million. Uh, we do have an audit findings report that we'll discuss, but in summary, uh, there were no internal control deficiencies, no unusual accounting policies. Uh, we do have an unrecorded uh, misstatement in regards to tangible capital asset additions being recorded this year versus last year. And uh, we encountered no significant difficulties that we feel should be brought to the attention of the board. Uh, we also want to thank management and staff for all their support in helping us uh, complete, uh, complete the audit. I know it, um, not many people around here anymore, so it was nice to get the information we needed so we can get this done in a timely manner. And I don't know if anybody has any questions in regards to this part of the presentation before I go into the audit findings report. Thank you uh, for that first part of your presentation. Uh, questions from the board? Seeing none, carry on. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the next, uh, yeah, the next part of our presentation is our audit uh, findings report. Uh, so in turn here, we'll go over a bit of our responsibilities. We'll talk about materiality, our audit results, uh, significant findings we would have had, and uh, any, uh, any adjustments. Yeah, yeah, you bet.
Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just go on to the next uh, slide there, which will just be the executive summary. Uh, so here, uh, really just outline the purpose of this report, which is to promote effective two-way communication between ourselves as the auditors and yourselves as the, as the board members. Uh, our independence, we do feel that we are independent of, uh, of the commission, so we do not hold a financial interest or have an economic dependence on the commission. In order to finalize the audit, as of today, we'll complete our subsequent event procedures up to today. We'll obtain a signed copy of the management representation letter. Uh, we'll complete uh, our required communication to the board, which is what we're doing right now with this presentation. And then we'll obtain evidence of the board's approval of the financial statements. <clears throat> when it comes to changes from our audit plan, uh, we do not have any significant changes regarding our audit plan in relation to our audit findings. Uh, when it comes to responsibilities, I just I touched on these earlier in the other presentation, but mainly uh, just in summary here, our audit uh, was uh, performed in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards and that the financial statements of the Commission present fairly in all material respects uh, in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. On the uh, next slide here at the top, responsibility of management and those charged with governance for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements and also the outline those charged with governance, the board is responsible for overseeing the Commission's financial reporting process. Uh, when it comes to materiality here, uh, we outline in our report here, uh, we use the level of 3% of the Commission's operating expenses for materiality. So what that would mean in turn is we're saying that if the, um, if the, if the expenses of the Commission were to increase or decrease by about 78,000, we feel that a user of the financial statements may have a different opinion on the outcome of the year. So, uh, so a user being either yourselves as a board member, a uh, member of municipality, um, uh, municipal affairs. So that's how we kind of determine materiality and what it kind of means when we're giving reasonable assurance as to the numbers are free from a material misstatement. Uh, when it comes to the next part of our presentation here, we discuss our audit results. Uh, so here we talk about key areas of focus. So our main key area here is management override of control. So the main risk here is that management is in a unique position to potentially manipulate the financial results. So whether they're adjusting amounts to conform to approved budget or adjusting in regards to, uh, to performance measures. Uh, so in our response here, we use data analytic tools to identify journal entries that may exhibit certain characteristics uh, that may be indicative of that change happening or occurring. Uh, we then test those journal entries to make sure that they are uh, reasonable. And then, um, so in doing that, we had no significant findings that we feel should be brought to the board. Uh, when it comes to resourcing costs, uh, the risk here is that you potentially have fraudulent or, or ghost employees that exist. Uh, so we do obtain understanding of your controls there, and we have performed substantive analytical procedures to assess the reasonability of the salaries, wages, and benefit costs. So we have no significant findings in that area. <clears throat> Now, when it comes to other operating expenses, as well as, <coughs> sorry, your accounts payable and accrued liabilities, uh, there is inherent risk there that you have potential fraudulent expenses or potential risk that the expenses are recorded in the incorrect period. Uh, so we do obtain, again, an understanding of your process and controls. Uh, we perform tests over a sample of expenditures. So we look at significant expenses as well as non-significant expenses, as well as perform a search for unrecorded liabilities. So we look at transactions that occur after your end to make sure that they've should be recorded in 2023 or in 2022. So we had no significant findings in that area. Uh, when it comes to your bank indebtedness and credit facility here, the risk is that uh, the potential amount is, not, is a fraudulent, uh, so related to bank indebtedness, and as well as the commission is subject to debt limits. So we want to make sure that you are in compliance with those guidelines. Uh, so again, we update our understanding of your process and the controls. Uh, we do agree the amount uh, directly with the financial institution there and as well as recalculate your debt limits for compliance. So we had no significant findings in that area. Uh, when it comes to significant findings portion of our report, uh, we feel your accounting practices, policies, estimates are in line with Canadian public sector accounting standards as well as your own policies. Uh, we encountered no significant difficulties as we brought attention to the board. Uh, when it comes to management representation, we have a copy of our letter here in Appendix 2, but once we, uh, again, once the statements are approved and we, we already have a signed copy of that, we'll be able to issue signed audited financial statements. Uh, when it comes to internal controls, our audit procedures did not reveal any uh, significant internal uh, significant deficiencies in internal controls. Uh, however, we had identified this other matter in the prior year in regards to your vendor payment information. Uh, so we wanted to provide an update there. 
Uh, so as part of our planned audit procedures, we had updated our understanding of the Commission's control environment. During 2022, we had noted management has implemented a mitigating detective control a review in the audit log report of TDs, uh, web banking. Uh, the audit log report can identify banking activities that have transpired within TD web banking uh, during the prior 120 days, including but not limited to new vendors added and modified vendor payment information. So the audit log report generated for review uh, will range from the last audit log date up to the report date to ensure that the completeness of activities within TD web banking. Uh, the audit log report is generated directly from TD by the manager, manager and is reviewed by the Director of Finance Services as part of the semi-monthly vendor payment process. So we consider this design and implementation of this control to be appropriate in response to lack of segregation of duties in the prior year. So now there is a control there to ensure that when changes are being made that, that it's being reviewed. So again, to, to I guess prevent uh, anything from being changed without not knowing that it's being happened when you're making online payments. So we feel that this control update was uh, uh, was a, a good change in order to make sure that, that was uh, being safeguarded against. Uh, when it comes to the next part of our report, uh, we talked about adjustments here. So we do have some unrecorded misstatements. So we had spoken earlier about materiality being about 78,000. Uh, we have a couple items uh, that were that we corrected in the 2022 year in relation to 2021, uh, but they result in a $28,000 overstatement of the commission's uh, surplus. So we do not feel that these adjustments um, being recorded in the current year versus prior year will result in any difference of opinion of a user of the financial statement. Uh, so with that said, uh, to account for tangible capital assets capitalized in 2022 that were originally expensed in the prior year, so that was about 24,000. Those were related to, uh, to computer equipment. And then as well to account for differences in amortization and accumulated amortization and results of those items. Uh, so again, we feel that these uh, unrecorded misstatements um, uh, will have no, no effect on the, on the users of the financial statements. Uh, so after that, uh, Appendix 1, our required communication here that we are independent, so we do not hold a financial interest, hold a position, have a personal or business relationship, economic dependence on the, on the commission. And then the last part of our report, which is Appendix 2, is our management representation letter. Uh, which outlines that uh, management was forthcoming with information and that the uh, items presented in the financial statements are, are accurate. So uh, that is our audit uh, findings report. I don't know if anybody has any questions in regards to that as well. Well, thank you for that presentation, uh, Thurl. Thank you. <laughs> any, uh, any questions that we might have from the board here? Public questions. We'll go in camera uh, just as a matter of course. And then, uh, in case there's any in-camera questions, either from the auditor to the board or for the board to the auditor. Seeing none, um, <clears throat> I think rather than keep you around for the governance of bylaw amendment, mm -hmm. why don't we just go in camera? Uh, if you can advance the, uh, the, uh, the motion, it says same one, number five. We'll move that and then we'll go in camera. If there are no uh, questions either way, it'll be a short in-camera session. We'll reconvene in public and move on. But uh, can I get somebody to move this motion then? Uh, perhaps, uh, Councillor, go ahead. Thank you, I move we, uh, the board move in camera in accordance with the provisions of Division Two, exceptions to disclosure of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, uh, FOIP. Uh, RSA 2000, uh, F25 as per sections 16 through 28. Thank you very much. I'll call the question. All in favor, please raise your hand. And that's carried unanimously. So staff, give us a few minutes.
Call for the uh, motion to approve the uh, 2022 audit. Councillor Laurie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll move that the board approve the audited financial statements, the, fi the financial information return, and the audit findings report for the year ended December 31st, 2022, and the submission of the audited financial statements and the financial information return to Alberta Municipal Affairs prior to the May 1st reporting deadline. Thank you very much. I accept that motion. Any comments? Uh, just again, like to express thanks to Jeff and Danny, our auditors, for the work that they've done on the audit for the commission, and to Lori and her team for all the work that they have done uh, in order to get this uh, completed in a timely fashion, given the circumstances that we're facing, and being here today to present. So, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, any other comments from any board member? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please raise your hand. And that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for, for coming. Before we lead this, uh, this particular uh, item, the, uh, the question was raised around the uh, final audit of 2023 and a dissolution audit. And uh, while uh, Lori and has worked with Municipal Affairs, uh, indicating that their position is, is that a final audit is not required. However, that may not be the, the desire of the board. And so, um, Ms. L. Hunton Lake, maybe you can talk a little bit about the difference between the requirement and uh, perhaps legal versus what we may want to do in light of the dissolution. Certainly. So the Municipal Government Act, Section 602.36, requires the board to have audited financial statements for the immediately preceding year. Now, obviously, depending on the status of the commission uh, in 2024, you may or may not have to provide audited financial statements then. Um, but there's no requirement to provide audited financial statements mid-year in any way. Um, so that's not a requirement under the Municipal Government Act. And Municipal Affairs, uh, which is one of the parties that needs to be provided with those audited financial statements um, is stating that they, they wouldn't require a, an, a partial year audited financial statement. Um, the board can certainly seek to have a, an end audit, although that, that kind of then creates a bit of an issue where you have a period of time where you're creating an audit for, but you need to have a board meeting to then approve that audit, and then there's presumably expenses that come as a result of that board meeting. Um, so you, you presumably don't want to create a, a black hole of, of extended auditing, but Theoretically, you can do it for a, for a shorter period, depending on how long it is and the board's um, interest. I would say that you need to balance, you know, the best interest of the commission, the costs, and all of, all of those other factors in determining whether or not undertaking um, aud an audit process. Obviously, the preparation of financial statements is probably necessary, but it's the audit process that you're deciding whether or not. Fair enough. Thank you very much. So, um, Mr. Jankowski, one of the one of the questions was, would Edmonton given that, or indeed Devon, given that they're uh, party to the, uh, to the final negotiate, well, the final agreements, will they require an audited statement? And perhaps uh, that might be something you want to investigate with Edmonton, bring back the board at the next meeting. Uh, we'll certainly uh, consider that and have that discussion with uh, the City of Edmonton representatives. Uh, we do uh, have that requirement to submit to the Ministry the financial statements for 2023, and that is one of those activities, those post-dissolution activities that we will be discussing with the Board, but we'll uh, certainly round the circle uh, with the City of Edmonton with regards to the uh, desire, perhaps desire, potential desire for an audit as well. Fair enough. Thank you. <clears throat> Before we move on, uh, any other comments from the board? Uh, seeing none, then I'll, we'll leave that and then we'll wait to hear from you for the next uh, meeting. Moving on, number five, the governance uh, bylaw amendment. Uh, Mr. Jankowski. Thank you very much. So we're happy to bring back today a... Uh, 
uh, a discussion around the governance bylaw amendment that was discussed with the board uh, in the prior meetings. You will recall that at the last meeting uh, there was a discussion around the need for a governance review as specified in the governance bylaw and given the current state of the commission the question arose as to whether uh, the expense of moving forward with the governance uh, review was still uh, an appropriate expense and as a result of those earlier discussions we did uh, move forward a, a suggested amendment to the governance bylaw at the last meeting we have gone through the process of issuing as per the governance bylaw the required notice to the eight members uh, earlier in the meeting in the consent agenda you saw some of the responses that came back from some of the members it wasn't a requirement for the members to actually issue a uh, or, or provide a response uh, but some chose to do so we have not received any negative uh, response relative to the suggestion of removing the need for a governance review from the governance bylaw and as such today we are bringing forward uh, a suggested motion that by special resolution the board do adopt a bylaw to amend the bylaw uh, to remove the sections that spoke to the governance review so happy to answer any further questions Kathleen is here as well um, but that is the short story around that thank you very much mr. Jankowski uh, any questions from any of the board members councillor Harris go ahead um, I, I think we're all on board relative to not undertaking a governance um, review as was anticipated in the original business case had we been a going concern moving forward, that made eminent sense to look at whether or not there were things that uh, you know we could do differently. Uh, but in the context of moving forward, and given the fact of where we are with the city of Edmonton and I guess Devon's uh, decision to pull out, is there anything to be gained by considering, and maybe it's tangential to this process, a lessons learned review, substantially less onerous, I would suggest, but something that would ultimately put this thing to bed in the context of lessons learned, uh, observations, kind of, there's going to be a historical reference point. So within the context of not doing the governance review, is there a need to do something different in terms of lessons learned? What went wrong? Why? What could we have done differently? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if that is an introspective thing of, of any value or not. But I raise it here because I'm not sure where else I'd raise that question. Right. Fair enough. Uh, I will ask for comments. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Finstad. Thank you. Just in response to Councillor Harris's concerns of the issue raised would be one that I would have is it would obviously incur some additional costs. Is that something that either individually we as members would pick up or, or uh, put that tab on Edmonton's bill as well? Uh, and that's what it boils down to is, is there enough deemed value in doing that that we could justify the added expense uh, to the city of Edmonton? And uh, Mr. Jankowski has a comment. Mr. Uh, Jankowski, go ahead. Thank you. So um, we're, we're getting into a discussion that, um, in my opinion, might be better served to have in camera um, with regards to the financial uh, position of the organization and in, in particular the discussion around some of the withdrawal agreement uh, principles. Um, and it sounds to me like the discussion is an additional discussion over and above what is being suggested here, and that is to amend the governance bylaw to remove that formal requirement for the governance review. So I'll, I'll make that suggestion to the board. Fair enough. I, I appreciate that. Um, um, Councillor Monkov Swain. Yeah, um, so thanks for stepping in there. I agree. Let's deal with the, the, um, the question at hand here, but it is a good discussion. I do have several points on that. I, I, I don't think we need to have that in a closed session. I think we can ensure that we, we stay away from um, from anything to do with, the, uh, with any of those agreements, but uh, let's address this one here, but then it w I think it is worth having that conversation around the lessons learned. I, I have thoughts, but let's let's vote on this and then we, Fair can, enough. we can adjust it. Okay. Uh, online, any questions? Okay, with the understanding that uh, perhaps we'll, we'll talk about it uh, later in the meeting and then 
will come out into open session and have a bit of a discussion around it as well. So, having said that, Councillor Harris, can I get you to move the motion? Is that the motion? Yet? That is the motion, yeah. I would be more than pleased to move that uh, by special resolution that the board adopt a bylaw to amend bylaw one a bylaw respecting the governance of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Service Commission as follows. Part 6, sections 94 to 96 are deleted. Thank you very much, sir. I certainly appreciate that motion and accept it. Any opening comments? Sorry, Mr. Jankowski, go ahead. Um, in light of the, the need for a special resolution on this, when it does come time for to a vote, I would suggest that this one calls for a recorded vote. Fair um, enough. Good point. Thank you. Any opening comments, uh, Councillor Harris? Any other comments by any board member uh, with the understanding that this will be a recorded vote? I'll call a question. All in favour? And that is unanimous um, with all board members here, Councillor Knack, Councillor Gromberg, Councillor Monkoff Swain, <laughs> Councillor Finstad, Councillor Lori, Councillor Harris, and, and Councillor Broadhead, all in favor. All right. That is that. We'll, we'll come back to that, Tim. Gordon. Motion to move in camera then? Councillor uh, Finstad, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move the board move in camera in accordance with the provisions of Division Two, exceptions to disclosure of the Freedom of Information and Privacy Act, uh, FOIP, RSA 2000, uh, CF 25, as for Section 16 through 28. Thank you very much. I'll call the question. All in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Recording stopped. Uh, Mary.
All right, welcome back, uh, everyone. Um, sorry. I have to uh, silence that timer because I'm now in risk of getting a parking ticket because I've already <laughs> got one here. So anyway, uh, we'll reconvene in public, and uh, we have a couple of motions that uh, the board is to entertain now, uh, and one in relation to... Uh, the in-camera discussion, which was basically around uh, uh, the process of dissolution and uh, our CEO performance. So, uh, Councillor Laurie, can I get you to make this motion? Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll move that the board accept as information the materials and discussion as presented in camera. Thank you very much. Call the question. All in favor, please raise your hand. And that is passed unanimously. On to the next one. Uh, Councillor Makoff Swain, can I get you to make this motion, please? Sure, I, I should do something today. Um, I will move that the board direct staff to report back on opportunities for accelerating or shortening the timeline specified in the EMTSC dissolution bylaw while ensuring all financial liabilities are appropriately addressed. Thank you very much. I accept this motion. Any opening comments? No. No comments. Any comments by the rest of the board? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, that's passed unanimously as well. Now the, uh, the effect of that motion is uh, that uh, we'll shorten the timelines uh, related to the dissolution. Thank you. Next motion, Councillor Harris, if I could get you to make the last two motions here. Uh, gladly. I would uh, move that the board approve the minutes of the February 2023 HR and Compensation Committee. Thank you very much. They were attached to the agenda. All in favor, call the question. All in favor, please raise your hand. And uh, that's carried unanimously. Now to the meat of the uh, HR and Compensation Committee. Mr. Chair, I would move that the board approve the uh, submitted CEO performance evaluation for the period May 2021 to December 2022 as a true reflection of the CEO's performance over that period and in conformance with the terms of the CEO's employment contract approve a yearly salary adjustment as recommended by the HR and Compensation Committee effective January the 1st, 2023. Thank you very much. Uh, I accept that motion. Any opening comments? Yeah, I think that uh, our CEO has done a yeoman's job of getting us to this point. It's unfortunate that we're not going to go much for further forward, but uh, I, th I think he did all of the things that we required him to do, and he achieved his uh, performance objectives during that performance period. We were a little slow off the mark in terms of getting it done. There were a lot of things, a lot of moving parts during that period of time. So in a perfect world, we would have done this evaluation uh, back in 2022, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we got it done, and uh, we thank uh, the CEO uh, and his staff, by extension, for all of the wonderful work, excellent work that they've done in getting this group and this board to where we are today. Um, and it would be nice if we could, could continue to go forward, but we can't. So this is an acknowledgement of the hard work that he, as our CEO, has done. So thank you very much, Mr. Jankowski and staff. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Harris. Any other comments from members of the board? Seeing none, I'll certainly uh, echo those comments and thank you for those sentiments. Uh, and uh, for everyone on the board, uh, it's been a journey of uh, all sorts of things. And uh, I was gonna talk a lot uh, later on this evening, but I probably won't have that opportunity. But I, I wanna say, I. I ran across a statement here the other day uh, when, when, you're, when you're dealing with um, uh, disappointment, when you, you've worked hard for something to occur, that uh, the, uh, the effort is not always lost. And so with, I hope nobody is offended that I will quote Dr. Martin Luther King, but he, during this whole process of the agony that went through the United States in the early 60s. He said, in this mountain of despair, we have formed a, a rock of hope. 
And so I think that's what we've done here is that I, eventually this region will be served regionally in a host of different ways, public transit being one of them. And while this, we might be facing a mountain of despair now, uh, out of that we can carve a, a rock of hope. So in any case, thank you for your comments and support of our CEO. And a lot of that hope was arrived at is because of the work that you did and the work that uh, the staff did as well. So thank you so much for that, for each one of you. I realize there's only four left and there was five others that helped as well. Uh, so it wasn't, certainly wasn't a bloated bureaucracy that uh, perhaps was stated at times. But I, I do want to thank you for all of that work. And so I'll call the question. All in favor? And that is passed unanimously. Thank you very much. And the last item of the agenda is to adjourn. And I so declare. Recording stopped. So we talked about... Uh